Next, though, human trafficking is endemic across the European Union, according to a report published today. The research from the Right of Centre organisation called the Centre for Social Justice says organised criminal gangs are several steps ahead of law enforcement. They're calling for extra border patrols and a different policing approach to tackle the problem. Our social affairs correspondent, Michael Buchanan, has visited one village in Slovakia where houses are suspected of having been built with the profits from trafficking people here to the UK. 4 a.m. at a Tesco store in eastern Slovakia and a coach prepares to depart on a 36-hour journey to Bradford. The route has been used by criminals as a cheap and easy way of trafficking people to the UK. Promises of jobs and money luring the vulnerable to a life of exploitation. The village of Pavlotsa has seen much change in recent years. Hundreds of people have moved to Britain. With the money they've made, luxurious, multicoloured houses have been built. What strikes you about visiting this village is that there is hardly anybody here. Most people are in the UK. And while many of them are working legally, we've been told that some of them are involved in human trafficking and that a few of the new houses here have been built with the profits from that crime. The village has been labelled the region's capital of human trafficking. Criminal gangs moving people to Britain to claim child benefit for children who don't exist. A local social worker is astonished by the scam. It's like unbelievable. Unbelievable? Yes. Why? Because if, you are, if I'm giving money to people, it's at least I can go and check them how many kids you have. But we don't. We don't. You don't. <laughs> it's not just benefit fraud. Yves Ogu took me to another village from where he says women have been trafficked to England for sham marriages. Criminals using legal loopholes in Britain to make vast profits exploiting people. It's quite clear to me that organised criminality that lies behind this form of modern slavery is too much endemic now. I've spoken to some people who 10 years ago spoke about human trafficking. So organised crime groups have had 10 years to become even more sophisticated. Every day bitches, broken my nose, broken my leg, broken my ribs, right side, left side. The human toll of trafficking. For eight years, this man was moved around Britain, first by Slovak, then Irish Roma groups, brutally controlled to work all hours in all weathers for no money. I working, black job, working for these people for factory. Uh, I working for factory, no pay money, everything money for bank for this guy, no for me. More than a day after setting off, the coach from Slovakia finally arrives in northern England. Recent legal changes here should make it harder to exploit people, but with new groups arriving each day, the potential for other victims to be used and abused remains depressingly high. Okay, bye bye. And Michael Buchanan is here now, as well as Ada McKay Craid from Anti-Slavery International. Uh, Michael, tell us a little bit more about this village and the problem. Well, this village is mainly populated by Roma Slovak people. And what happened in 2004 when uh, the UK and a couple of other EU nations allowed people from Eastern Europe to move is that an awful lot of people from this village moved to Glasgow in particular initially. And they moved there to get work. And most of them have made an awful lot of, of money from working legally in this country. They've now moved on from Glasgow in some cases to go to places like Derby and Rotherham and Doncaster and mm. Sheffield. And they work in factories there, doing in many cases lots of jobs that people in the UK wouldn't do. But what seems to have evolved out of that initial legal um, traffic is human trafficking with some people, a few people in this village apparently recognizing that benefit from fraud was possible in this country so they take people in, take the documents off them and then claim for child benefit for instance for, for children that either didn't exist or certainly weren't their own 
They might then engage in labor exploitation, so they'd take, as you saw in the film there, some guy into the United Kingdom, they'd take his documents, they'd get him a job, but they'd set up a bank account so that all his money came into their account, so mm -hmm. he got no money at all. Or they might engage in, in sham marriages, in particular what's been mentioned to me on several occasions is, is uh, Pakistani men will pay money if they're nearing the end of their stay in the UK to marry a EU, an EU national which allows them access to an EU passport. And the going rate, I've been told, is somewhere in the region of two to three thousand euros for a Pakistani man will, will marry an EU national to get that passport. And certainly, in, in, not in the main village I went to, but in a neighbouring village, I met two families whose daughters are married to Pakistani men. They told me the marriages are entirely legitimate, but one or two other people were saying, you've got to ask questions about it. Yeah. Aidan, how, how vast is this, the, the scale of human trafficking across Europe? I mean, the estimate. The best estimate probably is the British estimate of 13,000 within the UK, so you would imagine that... 13,000 who have been brought here? In trafficked into yes. the UK, and uh, at any one time that is. And one would imagine that the scale across Europe would be comparable to that, but probably higher in the West, Western Europe, rather than some of the new accession states in the East, which are both source and transit countries. Um, I mean, I think the focus that uh, the new report has in terms of policing is... You know, there needs to be more and better policing on organized crime associated with trafficking, but the problem is much, much broader than that. Uh, for example, I mean, the sort of problems Michael's just referred to, I mean, those would be better addressed by having much better labor inspection. The Gang Masters Licensing Authority, which does labor inspection, doesn't have the remit to look beyond food and agriculture. So that's where that the seems expectation crazy. Could. One doesn't understand why, whenever the government keeps saying it wants to be a world leader in the struggle against slavery, it hasn't done that very simple thing. Well, we've, we've recently had legislation brought in, the Modern Slavery Act. Is that going to, that has increased the sentences for traffickers um, by a number of years, actually. I mean, is that going to make much of a difference? The Modern Slavery Act is a bit of a curate's egg. It's good and bad in places, um, but there's a number of big loopholes in it. I mean, the most obvious one being in relation to tied visas for domestic workers, which is essentially a license for trafficking of domestic workers to the UK. Again, the government has been faced with evidence of this but has refused to act on it. And also in terms of some of the transparency clauses of supply chains, um, there's massive loopholes where overseas uh, subsidiaries of companies don't have to report on their activities. Now, the, those who are probably most responsible for trafficking in the world in the, from the UK are companies. Uh, in their supply chains across the world and that's a vested interest which hasn't been properly confronted by the government yet. We've talked a lot in recent days about um, the traffickers, the people smugglers, um, taking money from those in North Africa to get across the Med to Italy. We're talking about this today obviously with, with relevance to Slovakia. The other couple of weeks on the program we talked, uh, we heard this, the incredibly moving and distressing story of a Nigerian woman who was trafficked to the UK to mm. work in prostitution. I mean are our enforcement agencies across Europe and beyond working together because that would strike me as an obvious way to, to try and uh, at least pick up the traffickers. Uh, yes, unfortunately the UK dropped out of a lot of uh, European criminal justice measures recently but it's important if you're looking at the Mediterranean to bear in mind that's probably mostly not trafficking, it's people smuggling and that's a different thing and that's a, a something which is an expression of the convulsion of war in, in the large part across the Middle East and North Africa and that's something which needs to be dealt with in a significantly different way from the sort of trafficking. Right, well that's interesting because I have conflated the two and that's wrong you're saying. Yeah. 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 Yes, it is. Okay. Trafficking is movement of people for forced labor. Smuggling is assisting people to break immigration law. And very often people who are smuggled don't have to go <laughs> on any further to pay for that illegal service they move on. Yeah. Thank you. What became quite clear to me, which I didn't realize at all, is the way that these organized criminal groups are several steps ahead of the legislation mm. here. So for instance, when, it, when you come to talk about sham marriages, um, one, of the, one of the things they've cottoned on to is that in England, the registry offices aren't joined up at all. And also, if you go and uh, if you're a foreign national and you try to get married in England, they don't check whether you're married or not. <laughs> first of all, and secondly, if you're particularly uh, not even particularly a joint, you can get married, say, in a, in a registry office in the north of England, and then move down and get married in a registry office in the south of England. Those two registry offices never talk to each other, certainly not for many months, and so those marriages are, are validated. The money is paid. In That's a particularly important point because uh, the more effort you demand of the police to deal with this, if you're not sorting out the laws and regulations for facilitating. The trafficking, you're not going to be able to address the issue. And the laws and regulations in terms of marriage, in terms of trade, in terms of employment, they're things which have to be looked at too. Okay. Thank you both very much. Thank you, Michael. Michael Buchanan, and thank you, Ada McQuaid from Anti